Hey there, and welcome back to Transformers the Game! As you recall, in the last episode, we continued our high-res versus low-res comparison with the Decepticon campaign at Soxent Military Base. And now, we are continuing our examination with a return to the Autobot side. At more than meets the eye. And there's quite a few characters to compare here, so we better just get started. So here we are at Chapter 2, with our good old buddy, Jazz. Since we've covered most of Tranquility already, there's not going to be quite as many environmental shots, but I'll cover a few areas that I didn't cover in Suburbs. Let's start with a general comparison of the atmosphere between the high-res and the low-res. First off, the general lighting atmosphere seems about the same. I'm not noticing a lot of huge differences here. Comparing the skies, though, I much prefer the high-res sky. It's got a nice contrast with the clouds, compared to the low-res, which just looks kind of flat. Also, the high-res actually has stars in the sky. Look! Stars! Weird that the low-res doesn't. Also, the moon is in totally different positions. I find that a little weird. Interesting, this seems to be a case where the high-res lighting is better than the low-res. I guess it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis for each level. Well, that's enough for the environment for now. Let's go back and take a more detailed look at our old pal Jazz. So, starting with vehicle mode... I'm actually not seeing a huge difference. Now granted, of course, there's the huge shading contrasts, but aside from that, nothing really looks that different. Yeah, they both seem to follow the same general structure. But, from what I can see, the vent sections, I guess, appear to be quite a bit darker on the low res. The high res has got some sections that are pretty bright and just blend too much. I don't have an image of the solstice on me at the moment, but I believe the vents were on the darker side of things. Ooh, his antenna is a lot bigger on the high res compared to the low res, which is short and black. Looks like his license plate in Loras has an additional digit. I've got a 664 on the high res and a 6646 on the low res. I'm not sure which one is correct. I'll have to check that. Oh, I do see he has some additional text meshes in low res. He's got a Pontiac and a Solstice mesh, and I think he's got a spare Pontiac logo on the back, compared to the high res, which has none of that. I knew he didn't have a Pontiac symbol on the back when he was supposed to, because I tried to skin that on and it did not look good. Well, moving to textures. Low Res Jazz has way less color than I thought he would. Man, that's like mostly all black parts. Barely any color here at all. God, they must really just isolate colors for certain things. I mean, I guess that'll work, I mean, if you're combining your interior and exterior into one texture, I guess that's how you gotta do it. Doesn't leave you many options, though, compared to the high res which is a full-on vehicle body. So, you get way more customization with that. And there is, again, another totally separate texture for the interior. So, gotta give the points to the high res vehicle for this one. Okay. Moving over to Robot, oh, this one's quite the contrast. While the two versions seem to be pretty identically detailed for the most part, High Res is a bit more refined and has a few slight color distinctions. But generally, they're surprisingly identical. However, as we all know, High Res is notorious for his terrible UV job. Fortunately, Low Res has none of that. He's just got a Simple, clean texture job with no broken UV maps. I will never be able to forgive that. How they let that go 
so far that it even got into the game's cutscenes is just unforgivable. It's just insulting. But, uh, that aside, low-res jazz has a visored head compared to the high-res, which does not. I don't know why they decided to make high-res jazz with no visor, even though I think we all would have preferred that, to be honest. But no, let's just... not. But generally speaking, the low-res is a pretty good version. One of the more detailed low-res models I've seen. Not nearly as polished as the high-res, of course, but... Still, not too bad. Oh. Well. Looks like the low-res got that upper detail right. Because right above his tail lights, that section should be silver. High-res has it as black. And that is wrong. But low-res got it right. They get these details right in low-res, but not in high-res. It's just... Irritating, baffling, and stupid. But, um, yeah. Low res jazz is pretty good. Got some more details right, and it doesn't have a stupid broken UV map. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Probably the best low res model I've seen so far. And looking at his textures, it's, um, not as bad as I was expecting it to be. You can make out a few details, you know, it's not quite as clean as the high-res map, which looks like this. But still, it's not bad. One of the better jobs I have seen with low-res characters. Okay, well, I think that's all I can cover with Jazz. Let's continue on our merry way, shall we? By decimating innocent humans per Optimus' request. Stay smooth, Jazz. Stay smooth. And coming up next, we have Ironhide. Drastic difference you will see between a high-res and a low-res model. Why don't we go jump into the specifics? Frankly, these two almost look nothing alike. The Ironhide you see here is based off of really early concept art. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of inconsistency with what characters were made when, because some characters look pretty darn close to the final CGI renders, others not so much. Ironhide is one such case. So the high-res model we are all used to is naturally based a lot more on more recent CGI. It's still quite a bit off from what we got in the movie, but it's a lot closer. Obviously aside from the detail level being drastically different, one of his main defining features is the head. Low res has a masked head. High res does not. I guess at some point Ironhide was going to have a battle mask, but I guess it was scrapped at some point. I think there might actually be a final CGI render that uses it. I would have liked to have seen that, but uh, that aside, um, low res has these really strong accents of yellow. That's one thing I've really noticed. High res kind of has that, but it seems like there's a lot less of it. Both of those colors are wrong. It's supposed to be kind of a tannish color, as I recall. It's definitely not yellow. But, um, you can really see differences with the guns. He's got super detailed guns in high res, and low res just seems to be similar in design, but not quite that close. And oh man, his feet are way simple in low res they look really shortened out compared to the high res which just looks well weird but accurate I guess yeah there's just a lot of details here that are just way way off this might be one of the worst low res versions I've seen this must have been a very early model to be this far off yikes 
definitely gotta give my points to the high res for this one. Interestingly, I think Ironhide has some of the highest resolution textures of any TF character. Speaking of textures, let's have a look at those, shall we? So, low res, as you probably expected, is all compacted into one texture. And there's a lot less black than I would have thought. Golly. I don't know how we get to that much color being mostly gray. They must really isolate their color for low res characters because there's not a lot of it. But if you compare that to the high res, there is way more than usual. Ironhide, yes, has the typical upper body and lower body textures, as well as the interior texture, but in Ironhide's case, his interior texture is 1024 by 1024. Those are the biggest textures a robot in Transformers the Game uses. I am curious as to why they put such detail into Ironhide. Not that I'm complaining, of course. It's just very interesting. And in addition to that, he's got a texture for each cannon. So, compare that to the low res, which is all compacted into one, high res has like five. <laughs> that is quite a jump. So yeah, some real inconsistencies with resolutions here, but... Oh well, you know. It is what it is. Shifting over to vehicle mode. I unfortunately don't have a whole lot to say, as his camera angle in-game is really really tight and you can't get a lot of good views of anything but from what I can see the designs seem fairly identical for the most part never mind the obvious better shading the high res has one obvious distinction I notice is that the low res does not have a truck bed it is completely covered in even dropkick had a truck bed you didn't take the time to give dear old Ironhide one that's kind of iffy don't you think but, uh, that aside, um, Lorez has the 4x4 logo on his side. High res does not seem to. I believe he can have one on his right side, they just didn't bother to add it. But, as you probably expected, the Lorez has the 4x4 logos as a separate mesh. Which is what I wish the high res model had done. But they didn't. And that's all I can really say. Like I said, I can't get a lot of good angles on this dude. So, here are some spare shots. See if you can point out any differences. Well, moving over to his textures. It's... a lot worse than the robot mode. I swear, I don't see any color here at all. I, 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 seriously, where did I get the color for this guy? There's like, nothing here. All I see is like, lights and interior pieces. Nothing that even hints of color. <laughs> you can't tell me it's that small blend of pixels right there. You can't tell me that. Yeesh. Uh, that's real small. Compared to the high res, which is again a full-on body with a exterior and interior. Nothing too significant otherwise. Though low res does have another text-related texture which has his 4x4, some lights, that C4500, his fuel cap, road armor, all that stuff. But, that's about all I can say for Ironhide. Let's get on with the tour. Which leads us to some Decepta Chops to bust up. Including a new one, Hook. Let's wake him up. Swindle, I've covered you already. Stay down. But now you see how his spark chamber is kind of glowing? Cool, right? All right, Hook, now that Swindle is down, I can give you my undivided attention. So from what I can tell, both versions seem to mirror each other pretty closely. Though the low res is a much cleaner truck compared to the high res, which is all dingy and dusty. General structure is about the same though. Though I do see that the rear toe hitch is yellow for the low res and blue on high res. Now that is because the 
tow hitch is shared between the Autobot and Decepticon versions. Unfortunately. But I also see that Loris is again making use of those individual text meshes, which I really wish the high-res tow truck would have used. Because if you look at the high-res, it's really small, and some of the text is actually backwards. You know, it's just, again, a lot more practical to have individual meshes instead of a stuck texture section that's just mirrored and unlegible. Lorez also has another texture mesh near his front wheel. Some sort of ID number, I think. Not often there's a section that is completely unused between the high-res and the low-res in some fashion. But here? Yeah. Hmm. Alright. Moving to his textures. It's, uh... Well, a bit more legible than I was expecting. Still not a whole lot of color, though. I mean, yeah, I can actually tell where some sections are, but... I'd still think there would be a bit more. But, you know, I could probably fake my way around this and make something out of it. Compared to the high-res, which is, again, a full-body texture, with those mirrored text logos that I wish they didn't have. But at least they had the decency to make Orson's towing, uh, unmirrored. <laughs> Even though you could have saved time with that UV map by just making the text a separate mesh. Just saying. It's an option. But, uh, yeah, that's for that. Hybrids also has a texture for the tow hitch, like I mentioned, which is shared between Autobot and Decepticon, so you can't make it yellow. But, here's something interesting. Lorez has the individual text logos, like I mentioned, but, oh, here's the real kicker, so does Hi-Rez. Yeah, they have textures for logos, and they didn't even use them. That's just adding injury to insult. Why you no do this? You have it, you literally have it, and you didn't use it. And frankly, um, I think the low-res textures look better, because those logos are what you see on the model itself, but nope. Didn't do that. Well, moving over to robot mode, you get a, uh, quite a decent contrast, actually. I'm not really sure where to even begin. Well, let's start with the head. The head on the low res just looks derpy. It just looks so tight and close together, like he's got horns or something. The high res just looks cool, like a pretty much a mirror of Swindle. He does seem to have some different coloring on his knees. It's just a simple black in low res, and high res has a bit of yellow in there. And his feet, wow, he's missing a lot of details on his feet. Yeah, he has none of that yellow colored armor at all. Dang, yeah, he's missing a lot there. Otherwise, it's just general differences in detail. And one issue that really annoys me is the semi-off text logo on the right door of the high-res. Remember that? I fixed that in my enhanced mod. But here, again, you wouldn't have this problem if you had individual text meshes. But you don't. And low-res surpasses you. Hmm. <laughs> well, whatever. Let's look at his textures which is really more of the same. Though you can actually make out pretty much every detail here. Granted, it's really small, it would probably be really hard to skin, but you can make out pretty much everything. Compared to the high res, which is split off again, but again has some obvious detailing that makes what you're skinning fairly obvious. He's got the secondary body and inner pieces. Yeah, not much more to say than that. <laughs> Let's carry on our journey through the tranquility of tranquility. Eh. Ah, and here's another new face to greet us, Mixmaster. Boy, you look, uh, different. Why don't we take a closer look at you and see how different you really are. Before we do that, though, let's have a look at the North Construction site. So from what I can see, low-res naturally has a much better blending terrain. Really don't know why the high-res clashes so much. But yeah, the low-res just looks a lot more natural. 
I see we have that same building difference from the previous construction site. And if we move in a little closer, here's something interesting. That color pattern for that excavator or whatever is completely inverted. The yellow sections are blue, and the blue sections are yellow. Huh. Interesting. Everything else seems fairly similar. And while we're at it, let's have a look at the nearby housing estate, which has some interesting distinctions from the low res. The high res has a crosswalk going across the side, low res does not. High res has a lot better roads, though that house over there looks quite a bit more blue compared to that one, which just looks like it's a, maybe a bright white. Yeah, pretty minor stuff, but interesting nonetheless. Well, let's get to Mixmaster, shall we? So, Mixmaster is... Oh, my. Wow. Well, um... <laughs> Lorez is really suffering from that transparent issue. His windows look broken. He's got some really bad seams on his eye. His detailing is not that great. Though it looks like his legs are fairly consistent with the high res. He's generally just not that good looking. Well, it actually looks like his color is a bit different. High res has this yellowish green color, and low has more of a kind of an olive green. That's interesting. It's not often we get some drastic color differences, but I suppose it was inevitable. He's just missing so much detailing and paneling that he just looks really bad. Okay, um, texture-wise, he's, uh, wow. Well, his parts are easy to identify, I guess. A lot of them are, like, really small and jumbled. Those must be the inner pieces, I would guess. It's not the worst texture map in the world, you know. At least we can identify where everything is, more or less. But is that color really that different? Yeah, it is. Huh. That is interesting. Well, same deal with Mixmaster. He's got the main upper body, lower body, and inner parts. You know, you probably figured all that by now. And moving over to his vehicle mode. It isn't nearly as bad as his robot mode. Sure, the high res is naturally more detailed, but design-wise, it's not that different. Though, I can notice quite a few things. The low res is missing a lot of additional parts. It's missing the fuel canister near the front, that cylinder section near the rear. The front section is pretty similar, though the <laughs> front bumper on the low res, wow, that is really terribly simple. Because the high-res has got all those nice bolt detailing. Really nice on the high-res. Low-res, not so much. Though, both low-res and high-res are making use of individual logo meshes on the bumper. The Decepticon symbols for both are separate meshes. I mean, cool that they used it for high-res. I wish they used it on more, but they didn't. But... <sighs> Let's check out his textures. It's really just more of the same. You know, you can pretty much make out where everything goes. Still super low quality, but you know, it's legible. The high res again has the typical two additional textures. One for the main body, and one for the spare parts for whatever. And both have a single texture for the Decepticon logo. Actually, I think they are the exact same image. Huh. That's interesting. Didn't realize we'd actually be having some shared textures between low res and high res. Well, I think that's all we can say for Mixmaster. Let's get back to the action and finish him off.
Mix no more, Mix Master. Mix no more. Ah, and here is another new face, Optimus Prime. Wow. This dude is really different. He looks almost nothing like the high-res version. Well, why don't we examine him more closely? Okay, so starting with high-res Optimus, he's fairly close to the final CGI render, but there are quite a few aesthetic differences that are quite a bit off. But, if you compare him to the low-res... <laughs> oh my... Wow. He is... way off. There are a lot of sections on him that aren't even close to what the high-res has, so... It just is what it is. Well, he's missing a lot of pieces. And some pieces are a completely different shape. So, maybe this was based on some early concept art like Ironhide, but from what I can tell, the head seems pretty simplified. Chest looks way smaller compared to the high res. Doesn't seem to go quite as far down as it should. His shoulders seem to be completely missing some armor. God, his arm armor is super dinky. And he's got more of that transparent backsides. Again. His crotch looks nothing like the high-res version. It's like it's just a little piece there compared to the full-on hip section he's supposed to have. And speaking of his hips, the armor there just looks flat-out wrong. He's supposed to have those bold blue pieces at the top. Instead, he's just got something else. It's like he's almost missing a section up there. That just looks way off. Actually, I believe they reused this model in the Wii slash PS2 version of Revenge of the Fallen. Pretty sure it looked almost identical. I'll save my thoughts on that game for another time. <laughs> well, looking at his textures, he's a bit more legible than I expected. Obviously, it's still a nightmare to work with, but you can at least kind of make out where everything is, more or less. That's, uh, that's something. Compared to the high-res, his parts are very easy to find. You can pretty much tell what everything does. You've got his secondary arms and legs, and his inner pieces. So, even though these parts are difficult to find on the model, you can at least modify them easily on the texture. Moving over to vehicle mode, the distinctions are quite drastic. This, honestly, almost looks like a completely different truck. There's just so many design elements that are quite a bit off from the final Peterbilt. Well, there's definitely some additional bars on the low res. A lot of additional pieces compared to the high res. Not something I expected. There are some similar placements, but the overall feel of the vehicle is just so different. Well, the smokestacks are curved at the top. They're supposed to be full on straight. Don't make an innuendo out of this. This model had to be based on concept art. There's no way it couldn't be. Because that is just way different from what we get in the final movie. Well, moving over to textures. Optimus is, uh, simple, but obvious. Not bad. You got the top section and the side kind of connected. Not a bad design choice. Pretty simple, easy to follow. Compared to the high res, which honestly might be a bit more complicated. At least for the nose section. I've had some trouble with that in the past. But you can kind of make out where everything is. Though I do like how the low res is clean. I never liked how TFT Optimus was all dusty at his metal sections. I don't like that very much. He also has a interior and parts texture, which is fairly obvious to work with. The low res design of the texture map is good, and I like that it is clean. 
but the high-res model in general just looks so much better. Well, I think that is all I can say for Optimus Prime. We can now continue on our tour for one last stop. Oh, and incidentally, the Bumblebee being flown by the helicopter is actually high-res in high-res, so there you go. But, back on topic, we have one last stop on our tour, and that is with the Triple Changer Shockwave. I don't expect to find many differences between the two versions, but we'll do a detailed comparison as we encounter each mode. And starting us off, we have Turret Mode. So, model-wise, I'm not really seeing any differences. They both seem to have the same general setup, give or take a few pieces. There are definitely some differences with regards to color placement. Lora seems to be pretty much all purple, except for maybe that support on the cannon. Hyrus has a bit of silver and yellow going around. Nothing too special. Though, Lores does have a individual mesh for some logos. As you can see on that Decepticon symbol at the front. That is a good detail. I like that. High resist con symbol seems barely legible. Texture wise, both use only a single texture. The high res has a 256 by 256, and the low res is 128 by 128. So both were always on the low side when it came to resolution, but low is just going overboard. I don't know why they made Shockwave so low. Uh, the low res is a jumbled mess that I wouldn't even know where to begin to work with. High res is not much better. And there appears to be some slight color variances with it. Low res seems a lot darker. It may be a bit more blue. And high res has more of a bright purple going on. So that's interesting. Low res also has an additional texture for its text meshes, which include a con symbol, United States Army, an American flag, and 1524. Most of those are likely to be used in other modes. So, let's get back to the action for the next mode. And next, we have Shockwave's Robot Mode. I suspect we'll see the same distinctions that we saw in his turret mode. But, there's only one way to find out. Let's check him out. So yeah, kind of the same deal. The model is basically the same, just with some lower quality textures and less details. Well, I can see that he has some missing details on his right arm. High res has these yellow stripes on him. Low res does not seem to. Cannon looks about the same. Head shape looks a little different. High res seems like it's more of a wider rectangle. And low res reminds me more of the uh, FOC head. Also, his eyes a lot more apparent in high res than it is low res. From the back, whoa, it looks like he's completely missing his rotor blades. Yeah, I'm not seeing them there. That's quite a difference. But generally, not too different. Except, Lorez has that individual con mesh on his back. Which, I don't know if Hyrez even has a con symbol back there. Doesn't look like it. Ah, but one change I do notice. Lorez has the 1524 text mesh on his leg. Hyrez just has it textured on there. And it looks like absolute garbage. This is exactly what I'm talking about. If you had an individual mesh, that would not be a problem. But did you listen to me? No. Well, checking out his textures, low res looks like absolute scrap. I mean, seriously, just look at this. What am I even supposed to do with this? Honestly, I don't know where to begin with that. It's jumbled and janky and... Ugh. That makes Scrapper look like a bloody picnic. Ugh. Well, it's still the same 128 by 128. If you compare that to the high res, you get free 256 by 256 textures. You've got your main upper body, 
secondary parts, and your interior stuff. So, it's still low, but at least there's more low. It's still better than the scrap we could have in low res. <laughs> My goodness. Well, we have one more mode to take a look at. So, let's jump back into the action and have a look. And that is, of course, Shockwave's helicopter mode. It's pretty tricky to get a good looking game, but I'll do my best. So these two are actually quite distinct from each other. High res has way more detail coming through compared to the low res. I mean, honestly, the low res just has a bunch of gibberish, and most of it's all purple. The high res has some accents of silver, some more defined textures, various parts with more color, it just looks so much better. Although I find it irritating how one of Shockwave's high-res windows is purple, while the rest are black. That's kinda triggering. But yeah, high-res is quite superior as far as general design and textures go, though low-res again comes back with the individual text meshes, as he has the 1524 number on his tail which high res also has, but just look at that, it's pixely looking garbage. And it's not actually mirrored, I don't think, because you could see a lap in the texture on his tail, and if you were to check the other side, it is also not mirrored, so props for doing a separate UV point for the other side, but why didn't you just use an individual mesh, man? It would have been so much more practical. But yeah, honestly, even the individual text meshes just look terrible against this purple blob of a texture. This texture just looks like gibberish. There's no definition anywhere, it's just all scrumbled garbage. Ugh. So, in a nutshell, sloppy texture, less detailed pieces. Let's look at his textures. And surprise, surprise, they still look like garbage. I mean... I don't even know what I'm looking at. What goes where? What does what? Who does who? Why does why? I don't know. This just looks so... Poopy. <laughs> yes, I said poopy, because that's how it looks. Color it brown, spit an image of poo right there. Compare that to the high res, which has two textures. There's the main body, and there is the spare parts and wings. So yeah, quite a bit more poured into this guy. And High Res Shockwave even has a Cullen symbol on his wing. I didn't see one on the low res. Not even a mesh for it, so... Pity. And while yes, they are still both 256 by 256, at least you can kind of get an idea what you're working with. But with that, I think we have covered everything there is to say about Shockwave and his free gosh darn modes. Let's wrap this tour off with Shockwave's inevitable death. And there you have the more than meets the eye, high res versus low res. As interesting and as fascinating as all these comparisons were, this is one of the most painful videos I have ever had to make. I never want to compare this many characters again. Ugh. I had to stay up till freaking midnight almost to record these stupid lines. But. You know, it's done, it's finished, everything should hopefully be smooth sailing from here on out, at least for a while. The next two episodes are gonna be a lot simpler, if I can even get them out in time, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, interesting comparison as always. Gotta give props for Jazz, his robot mode in low res was probably the best I've seen so far. But yeah, that's it for this episode. I need a serious cooldown. 
I'll see you in the next episode where we tackle Barricade Tranquility. That should be a lot simpler. Ugh. That'll do it for this episode. Be tranquil in tranquility.